Compound inequalities are inequalities that involve what we talked about last video, the and, ors, and the in-between. So whenever you want to solve in a compound inequality, here's kind of your basic steps you want to do. First, you want to solve each individual inequality. You want to graph each individual inequality. Then you want to graph your compound inequality. Then you want to write your final answer. So it may seem a little confusing here, but um, it's very systematic. Let's do some examples so you can see. All right, so we want to graph the solution on a number line and then write what the final solution is. Here we've got x is less than 5 or x is greater than or equal to 7. So first, notice I already have my x's by themselves. So step one's complete, no need to solve. Next, let's graph each individual inequality. So first, I'm going to give myself a number line here. And I want my number line to include both of my important numbers. That's 5 and 7. So I'm going to go ahead and put 5 here and 7 here. And first, I'm going to graph this inequality. x is less than 5. So I'm going to go ahead and graph x is less than 5. So since it's uh, less than, not an equal to, I'm going to have an open dot. And I'm going to shade to the left since I'm less than. Next, let's go ahead and let's focus on x is greater than or equal to 7. I'm going to draw another number line down here and I'm going to make it the exact same number line as the one above. So I'm lining up my important numbers here, 5 and 5, 7 and 7. Now for this one, I'm x is greater than or equal to 7. This is going to be a solid dot at 7 since we have that equal to underneath. And we're going to greater than, so we're going to shade to the right. And this represents all the solutions of x is greater than or equal to 7. Now, I'm going to give myself one final number line here. And this is going to be my final graph. So again, I'm going to put my two important numbers here. And before I graph on this, I need to come up here and look at whether I have an or or an and. Here I have an or. Remember, or means that this could be true or this could be true. So, since this is true for x is less than 5, I'm going to have x is less than 5 here, and I'm going to do green. So this is my final answer in green, x is less than 5, or, so I'm including both, x is greater than or equal to 7, I'm also including this because it's an or. So that's going to be a solid closed dot and shaded to the right. So my final answer here, looking at my my graph here, this is my this is my final graph. So I'm going to write my final answer as x is less than 5. That represents this here. And then whenever you have a gap, notice we have this big gap here with nothing. Whenever you have a gap, that's when you write an or, or. And then I have x is greater than or equal to 7. And that represents this here. x is greater than or equal to 7. So I just went left to right. x is less than 5 or x is greater than or equal to 7. And here's my final answer. And this was my final graph. Let's do another. Here we have x minus 1 is greater than negative 2 and 2x is less than or equal to 6. So our first step here is to get our x's by themselves. So we're going to solve each of these inequalities. We're going to add one here, add one here. That's going to give us x is greater than negative 1. We still have our and here. So I'm just going to write our and. And then here we divide by 2, divide by 2. That's going to give us x is less than or equal to 3. Now that we've got each of these solved, let's go ahead and graph each of those individually. So, I'm going to start by giving myself my number line, Whoop, let me get my marker back, number line with our important numbers, negative 1 and 3. I put the negative 1 on the left because it's smaller. And first, let's start by graphing x is greater than negative 1. So, I know it's going to be an open dot and shaded all the way to the right. Next up, I have my x is less than 3. I'm going to give myself the same exact number line with my important numbers, negative 1 and 3. 
and I want to graph x is less than or equal to 3. That's going to be a closed dot on 3. And we're going to shade everything to the left. All right, one final number line here. Again, I need my important numbers, negative 1 and 3. Now looking up, back at our original problem, is this an or or an and? Here we have an and. That means that these have to be in common in order for it to be included in our final answer. So I have all of this greater than negative 1. I have all of this less than 3. But the only thing that they have in common is this in between portion right here in between so for my final answer I'm gonna have an open dot here at negative one because this is an open dot here then I've got all of this included because it's an and statement remember both are true for the and and then here we're gonna keep a closed dot because we've got a value for three and a value for three up here so this is gonna be my final graph now when I write my final answer, I have uh, negative 1 here. I'm going to go from the left to the right. I have negative 1, and I have everything right in here between negative 1 and 3. So I can go ahead and write negative 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 3, or x is, is between negative 1 and 3. And these are my answers. Okay, these next couple, I'm going to go ahead and save time by not doing ones that need solving. But remember, you have to solve first if they're not solved. So since these are already solved, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and x is greater than 5. Let's go ahead and draw our number lines with our important numbers. That's going to be negative 1 and 5. And to start out, we can go ahead and graph x is greater than or equal to negative 1. That's going to be a closed dot shaded all the way to the right. Next, give ourselves an identical number line with our important numbers, negative 1 and 5. And we're going to go ahead and do x is greater than 5. That's an open dot shaded to the right. Okay, let's go ahead and do our final number line here. That's going to be, again, our important numbers are negative 1 and 5. And let's look back up here. Here we're dealing with an and, so we want what makes both things true. Let's look at what they have in common. Looking at our number lines here, these are not in common, they're not in common, not in common, until we get to 5 here. Now this is where we start noticing that they overlap with each other. So our final answer here is going to have an open dot in 5, because 5 is not included, right? Because there's no value here, and then everything shaded to the right because that's where x is greater than negative 1 and x is greater than 5 both of these are in common so there we've got our final graph and going from left to right here we've only got values that are greater than 5 so our final answer would be x is greater than 5 alright what happens if we do the same problem except instead of an and we have an or. So this gives us x is greater than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than 5. Now our individual graphs are going to be the same. We've got x is greater than or equal to 1, negative 1. We've got x is greater than 5. But this time, since we have an or instead of an and, we want to include everything. It can, it can be included in this one or this one to get it on our final solution. So since we've got a green, uh, I mean a, a blue solid dot up here shaded to the right. This is going to be included since it's an or. And we're going to go all the way to the right. And even though this is an open dot, because it's shaded up here, it's still going to be shaded on our final answer. And we're going to keep shading all the way to the right. We include everything that's on either one of these in our final answer. And if we went down to rewrite this, uh, instead of x is greater than 5, here we'd have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
All right, here we've got x is less than 5 or x is greater than 1. I went ahead and graphed those. Here we've got x is less than 5. We've got x is greater than 1. Now we're in or, so remember, everything's going to be included. So I'm coming down to my final answer here. I see I've got all of this less than 5. I've also got all of this greater than 1. So if I include everything, my final answer actually has every number in the world because it has everything that's less than 5 and it also includes everything that's greater than 1 because it's an OR statement. So how we write our answer in this case is all real numbers. All real numbers. Here we've got x is less than negative 1 and x is greater than 2 greater than or equal to 2. So here we've got x is less than negative 1. I graph that with an open dot. x is greater than or equal to 2. Graph that with a closed dot. Our final answer has to be including everything that they have in common because it's an and. Noticing, look at these graphs. This is all less than negative 1, but that's not in common with this. This is all greater than or equal to 2, but that doesn't have it in common. So our final answer is just an empty number line because they have nothing in common. So in this case, all you'd write is no solution, which actually makes sense because there is no way you could think of a number that is both less than negative 1 and greater than 2. All right, I know it's been a long video, but I just have to do one really quick example of these in-between ones because we haven't done one yet. This is x plus 1 is in between negative 3 and 5. So first let's go ahead and solve that. So we subtract 1 each side. This is going to give us a negative 4 is less than x is less than positive 4. Now instead of graphing these individually, because we already know it's in between negative 4 and 4, we can just give ourselves our answer right away. We've got a negative 4 and a 4 is our important numbers and we know we have open dots because neither of these have the equal to sign underneath and then our answer is just going to include everything that's in between. Your in between problems always are just in between your two important numbers. So whenever you have a scenario that is in between like this one up here just solve for it and then you could graph in between your important numbers and that's your answer. So these ones are actually quite a bit quicker than the others.